Knot tying is an essential skill for every backpacker and camper. And mastering just a few knots will make you more efficient when setting up camp and make your experience that much more enjoyable. Plus, a lot of these knots will be handy in everyday life and emergency situations. I recently taught an essential knots class, and I'm hoping this video provides a refresher for my students and a tutorial for you learning these knots for the first time. I'm gonna go over the parts of the rope as well as about a dozen knots that I think are essential that everybody should know. And at the end, I'll show you a way to tie your shoes that I guarantee will never come untied. There are a bunch of terms that define the parts of a rope. I'm gonna be referring to different parts of the rope as I show you how to tie the various knots. The first term is the running end, or sometimes called the working end. This is the part of the rope we'll be using to tie the knot. The rest of the rope is called the standing part or standing end. Then we have an overhand loop. To form an overhand loop, we're gonna use the analogy of turning the keys in the ignition of a car on. The underhand loop is just the opposite. We're gonna be turning that car off. Sorry if you have a push button start. A turn is just when the rope passes around an object. And finally, a bite is when you pull a fold or a U-shaped piece of the rope. So for these tutorials, I'm gonna to try to keep the standing end or standing part towards the top of your screen and always try to keep the running end visible in the screen. The first knot we're gonna tie is an overhand knot. You've probably been tying these your whole life, something like this. This is typically used as a stopper knot. But I'm also gonna show you how to tie this knot using our overhand loops and underhand loops to get some practice with that. So remember, an overhand loop, we're turning that car on. So we're turning those keys on to create this loop. Notice it forms a P with the running end in front of the standing end. And then we can just pull that rope through and we have an overhand knot. We can also do that with an underhand knot by turning the car off. We're turning the car off. Notice that the running end is behind the standing end this time when we form that P. And then we're just gonna poke that rope through to create our overhand knot. Our next series of knots are slip knots. So the first one we're gonna create is an overhand slip knot. We're gonna turn that car on to create that overhand loop and that P. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a bite of the running end through that loop. Cinch that down and now we have a slip knot on this side controlled by the running end. Another form of a slip knot is a more standard slip knot, and in my opinion, more useful. We create it by turning that car on and creating that overhand loop. And then what, instead of pulling the bite of the running end through, we're gonna fold that loop over and pull that standing end through and cinch that down. This time, instead of the running end controlling the slip of the loop, it's the standing end. The next knot is extremely strong and versatile. It's commonly used as a stopper knot, but can also be formed as a loop if you're using a bite. It's called a figure eight knot. And the way I like to teach this is take a bite of rope, and this is your snowman's head. Now what you're gonna do is take the snowman's scarf, the running end, all the way around the snowman, and then you're gonna poke him in the eye. And if you did it right, you'll be creating a figure eight in your rope. And for this knot, it doesn't matter which side your running end is on. You just gotta make sure you go all the way around the snowman's neck. So we're gonna wrap it around and poke them in the eye and it forms that figure eight. And of course, with all knots, there are some shortcuts. One quick way to tie a figure eight is to twist twice towards your running end and then poke it through the loop and that will form your figure eight. A figure eight is a great loop knot when you tie a figure eight on a bite. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a bite of our rope and then we're gonna fold it over on itself. Notice we're still creating that snowman just with four pieces of rope. 
Then we're gonna take that bite and we're gonna wrap it around and that's our snowman scarf all the way around and still poke them in the eye. And we're gonna pull that bite through and if we dress the knot, you can still see that figure eight there, but we've created a very strong loop on this side. The next series of knots are commonly used to join two pieces of rope together. And a knot that's used to join a larger diameter rope to a smaller diameter rope is called a sheet bend. And we start this out by taking a bite on the larger diameter rope and pinching a loop like that. Then just feed the smaller diameter rope up through and around. Notice that the running part of the smaller diameter rope is inside of its standing part. Then feed that rope underneath the standing end. When you pull these tight, it now binds down and joins those ropes very tightly together. Another common knot to join two pieces of rope together is called the reef knot or the square knot. And commonly you've heard this tied right over left, left over right. And that works, but I wanna add one thing to that. So you'll go right over left and the right goes around the rope. And now when you bring left over right, the left goes around. And if you do that, you should end up with these two loops and when bound together, it's a very strong knot, maybe one of the strongest. Another common way to join two pieces of rope together is using the double fisherman's knot. And I use this knot to create a prussic loop for the prussic knot, which we'll learn later in this tutorial. To form the double fisherman's knot, we're gonna take our two ends of our rope and we're gonna stack them together and pinch somewhere in the middle. Make sure you have enough rope on both ends. And what we're gonna do is we're going to wrap away from us once and then towards where we're pinching the second time. And you'll notice that this creates an X right here. You're gonna feed your rope underneath the X. Although the people in my class actually like the analogy of these two barrels. See how these two barrels are being formed? Whichever works for you, you're gonna pass it under the X or through those two barrels and then we're gonna pull that tight. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. Remember, we wrapped away from us on this side. On this side, we're gonna to wrap towards us once, towards us twice, and you can see it created that X right here, or it formed those two barrels. So we're gonna put that underneath the X or through the two barrels, whichever works for you. Pull that tight. And if you did it right, you should be able to pull your two standing ends together to form the double fisherman's knot. And if tied correctly with going once away and towards you, those four barrels or loops right here will sit nice and flat. Hitches are very useful to quickly tie and untie a rope around an object very quickly. They're usually very strong when under tension. Create a half hitch you're gonna take the running end and create a turn around an object. Then pass the running end over the standing end and through the new loop that was created on the side of the object. This creates a half hitch. And typically you're gonna create multiple hitches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep going the direction around the rope that we started and feed through the new loop that was created. And this will create a double half hitch which is pretty secure. You can get even more secure and create just a third half hitch by going that same direction around, feeding through that new loop that we created and securing that down. If we dress it up a little bit, you can see it's very, very secure under tension. Another handy hitch is the clove hitch. Start by taking the running end and creating a turn around an object. Notice that my running end is to the right side of my standing end. And what I'm gonna do is place that over the top and create another turn. Notice that I created an X in the rope. Now I'm gonna feed the running end underneath that X and in between the other rope and cinch it tight. And you can see how it creates this X right there. You can of course create the clove hitch in the other direction. If I were to take the 
running end to the left of the standing part. I just need to go in the other direction to create that X, create one more turn around it, and then go underneath the X to create my clove hitch. Right there's my X. Another way to tie the clove hitch is the two loop method. And this is used if you can feed a loop over the top of your object. To tie the clove hitch in this way, we're gonna turn that car on once to create the first overhand loop, turn the car on a second time to create a second overhand loop, and we're gonna place the second loop behind the first loop, and then feed it over the top of that object. And when you pull it tight, you can see there's our X and our clove hitch. The next hitch is the tot line hitch. And in my opinion, one of the best hitches to learn. We start by taking the running end and creating a turn around an object. And then we're gonna feed our running end over the top of our standing end and through the new loop that we're gonna create. And now we're gonna go a second time in that same direction through that loop towards the object. It's gonna create two barrels inside of that loop. Then we're gonna come to the outside of that loop one more time in that same direction and feed it through that new loop created. And after you dress it and tension it down, it'll act as a pretty good slip knot, but the power of this knot is that it's adjustable. So once it's all tensioned down, you can actually adjust it like this, and under tension, that loop is gonna stay in place. So this is very handy when you want to adjust a tent guy line or a ridge line or secure an object down. And like the other hitches, the tot line can be tied in either direction. So if I take this turn around the object and you just have to keep going in the same direction, if I can go this way around, or if I started the other way, I just have to continue going this way around creating those two barrels on the inside and then come and create the final loop on the outside of it. And if you dress it up and cinch it down, it's gonna work exactly the same as the other way and is adjustable just the same. And now we've come to the infamous Bolin knot, also called the king of knots. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to tie this. The most traditional way to tie it is to start by creating an overhand loop. We're gonna turn that car on and we're gonna take our running end, feed it up through the hole. Also, the bunny is coming out of the hole, around the tree and back down the hole, pinch the running end and the end inside of the loop and pull the standing end and you've created a bowl and knot. The traditional way to tie a bowline works for a lot of people, but I find the slip knot method easier to learn and much quicker to tie. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our standing end of the rope and turn our car on and create an overhand loop. Then we're gonna pull a bite from the standing end through. Notice that that's just the slip knot that we made earlier in the tutorial. Now we're gonna thread the running end through the back side of that loop. We're gonna pinch like we did before and then it's gonna pull the standing end and that's gonna slip that knot right over the top and create a bowlin. In the last clip, I slowed down the last part of the slip knot bowlin to show you what it looked like. But typically you wanna do that much quicker. So we'll create our slip knot on this side, feed the running end through, and when you get to this point, you wanna give it a really nice hard tug to finish off that bowlin. And one last thing I'd like to point out with the slip knot method. After you create your slip knot, I've been saying go through the back side. And I know this because I take a look at the way the knot, the slip knot is created, and I can see that it's coming behind the running end. So that creates the standard bowline. However, if we were to create that slip knot and bring the bowline through the front of that slip knot, it's gonna create what's called a cowboy bowlin, which if you notice, the running end is on the outside of the loop. And it's debatable which one's actually better, the standard bowlin or the cowboy bowlin. And if you wanna tie a bowlin around an object, you're gonna just take enough of the running end to fit around the object, create your slip knot on the standing part, 
take the running end around just like you did before and we're just going to bring that through that slip knot and pull it down and now we have the bowlin around an object. If the bowlin is the king of knots, the alpine butterfly is the queen of knots and it's used to create a loop in the middle of a rope. There's many ways to tie the alpine butterfly, but my preferred method is to use this wrap method where you're gonna wrap around your hand once, twice, three times. And now you're going to grab underneath the last wrap, the middle wrap, and pull it out. And then pull it all the way around to your first wrap and then through that loop. And if you dress it up, you should have something that looks like this. And if you needed to repair a damaged piece of rope, what you would do is you would put the damage somewhere inside of this loop. A way to speed up the wrap method of the Alpine butterfly is to wrap once, wrap twice, and then instead of your third wrap coming this way, cross it over that middle wrap. And what that effectively does is skips a step. Now you can grab the outside rope and put it through the other two and then underneath and through that loop. And it'll create that same alpine butterfly. And just so I don't get tons of comments saying that there's one more method, here's the twist method for the alpine butterfly. What you're gonna do is grab a bite of rope and you're going to twist once, twice, and notice that that creates two loops. You're going to take the top loop and come all the way down, and notice we still kind of have this loop that looks more like a pretzel, and we're going to poke through the bite through that middle loop. Dress it up, and we now have our alpine butterfly. Next up is a prussic knot, and we've already learned how to create the prussic loop using the double fisherman's knot. Usually when you create a prussic knot, you want your loop to be a smaller diameter than your main line so it bites down correctly. And these are handy for setting up a tarp or hanging some gear on a ridge line. Climbers also use it as a backup safety device. And to create the prussic, what you're gonna do is come over the top like this, and then you're just gonna feed it through once feed it through twice and what you want to make sure is that these loops on the outside come towards the middle. Feed it through a third time and again just make sure all those loops are lining up and your last loop is on the middle. Once you have it three times you can dress it up and tighten it up and the idea behind the prussic is that you can move it when it's un not under tension, but as soon as it's under tension, it bites. So you can imagine how you can adjust a tarp uh, to get tension on the tarp correctly with one of these. And now the moment you've waited for, the way to tie your shoes, where I will guarantee they will never come untied while you're out on the trail. Start off by your normal crisscross applesauce and tighten that up. Make your bunny loop but this time what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap once over your thumb forwards, twice over your thumb forwards, and then pull that bite through the loop underneath. And if you do it right, it should be a very nice flat knot, and I will guarantee that this will not come undone by itself. But the great thing about it is it just unties very easily. So there's about a dozen knots and a couple variations that I find really useful both on the trail and in my everyday life. I know knots can sometimes be frustrating, so keep practicing, keep at it, and you'll get it. Remember, practice makes permanent. This is a perishable skill, so you gotta keep practicing. When you're watching TV, grab some rope and tie a few knots uh, every night. And if you want some extra credit, go check out my trucker's hitch video. That's a great way to make a ridge line using three of the knots that we learned today. The bowline, the slip knot, and a half hitch. Let me know in the comments if you successfully set up a trucker's hitch. And if you like this video, be sure to click that like button. 
And if you want to see other gear reviews, how to's and outdoor adventures, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside. Mm -hmm.